All right, welcome to uh, part four of this video series for chapter five, diffusion in solids. So, so far we have talked about the mechanism of diffusion. This is vacancy or interstitial. We've talked about why it's important, uh, example of case hardening. We talked about how to predict the rate of diffusion for steady state using fixed first law. And now we'd like to talk about where the temperature dependence comes in. All right, so temperature dependence is in that diffusivity or diffusion coefficient in fixed first law, okay? And so this diffusion coefficient is like a rate constant for the diffusion process, and it has an Arrhenius behavior, exactly like the equation we had for the number of vacancies and like we were seeing before for chemical kinetics. So now my activation energy, my barrier, is that for diffusion. Okay. Again, we would end up with a KT, or in this case, an RT, R the gas constant on the bottom. RT is usually better here because Q is usually given perhaps in joules per mole. And so the gas constant being in joules per mole Kelvin um, cancels our units. So whether you use K or R here just depends on the units that's given for your activation energy. Okay. So this term inside the exponential uh, has to be dimensionless. All right, and then we have a constant out front of the exponential, so it's called the pre-exponential, and this d0 and this activation, en activation energy q are both independent of temperature. Okay. So this is how we can then calculate the, di the diffusion coefficient at a given temperature. And the important thing to notice is that it's exponential. Uh, and this is particularly important. If you think about this, and we, if you go ahead and put in some numbers here, you'll find that room temperature, D is very small, so materials are stable. Right? They're not moving around, um, at least not in our time frame. And then as we go to higher temperatures, this diffusion rate goes up exponentially, which allows us to now move stuff around, move solid uh, mass around, compositions around, in the solid state. And so it allows for a lot of processing methods. Um, and so that's pretty neat if you think about uh, that ability over a fairly small temperature window, uh, room temperature up to maybe a thousand degrees C. And we go from stable materials to materials where we can move mass around and process them. All right. So in this um, particular plot, this is actually a good plot, and, and then let me just bring up a, a good point when you're doing your reading. Uh, whenever you see a plot in the text and you're doing your reading, you may want to look at what they're trying to show you um, in the plot. Ask yourself, why, why are they bothering to show you this particular plot? Um, it's rare in most of the cases that they're just trying to show you a value. Um, it's always because they're trying to show you some kind of a concept or some kind of a trend. And so in this particular case, the thing to kind of ask or notice is that it looks like carbon and iron are fairly high in rate over this temperature range. And then we've got sort of iron and iron, iron and alpha iron, aluminum and aluminum. So these are self-diffusion cases. And they seem to be fairly low, at least in comparison to these. So, you, so if you notice this, you might ask why. Well, this is showing you the difference between interstitial diffusion, which is the carbon case up here. And since these are self-diffusion, then these have to be by a vacancy mechanism. So we have vacancy here and interstitial up here. So you can see the interstitial mechanism being faster, like we said earlier. But now you can see it in values. Um, this alpha iron versus gamma iron is something that we'll get into a lot more later. But the alpha iron is your room temperature iron. This is body center cubic. And gamma iron is a higher temperature iron uh, where you do most of your steel processing. And this is actually a face center cubic material. Okay. So you don't have to memorize these for this chapter. We'll, like I said, we'll work with these a lot more as we get into chapter nine. So interstitial greater than substitutional. 
um, substitutional meaning vacancy. All right. So let's look at a quick example. Uh, we have the activation energy uh, given for the diffusion case. We've also been given not the pre-exponential, but the diffusion coefficient, that's this one, at a particular temperature. Okay. And we like to know what the diffusion coefficient is at a different temperature, 350 degrees C. All right, so we could just go ahead and plug in um, our value here for D, plug in for Q, and then solve for D0. Once we get that, we can then use the Q given the D0 we just found with the new temperature of 350, calculate D. Okay. Um, another way to do it is to go ahead and do all the equation manipulation first, see what we get, and put in the numbers at the end. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to transform our original equation by taking the natural log of both sides. Okay. Then we're going to subtract the two equations from each other. And now we've got one equation that will give us the diffusivity at some temperature if we know the diffusivity at a different temperature. So I can just plug straight into this equation. Uh, make sure you're in Kelvin, you plug away, and we get our new diffusivity. So we changed only from 300 to 350. This is a pretty minor change, but you can see we about doubled the diffusivity value. 